Hi, my name's Adrian Bethune. I'm a primary school teacher and also author of a book called Wellbeing in the Primary Classroom. Uh, I'm just going to give a short presentation today called Teaching Children How to Handle Difficulties. Uh, the reason I've chosen that topic is because I think it's actually a key to well-being, knowing how to um, overcome obstacles in your life, but also I think it's quite relevant uh, in the current global pandemic to teach children how to handle difficult situations. Uh, and one of the key concepts of this is this idea of the stretch zone. Um, this idea comes from a psychologist called Tal Ben-Shahar, uh, who was a professor at Harvard University. We'll, we'll be learning a bit more about him later. Um, but essentially the stretch zone has these three zones. So as you can see in the middle is the comfort zone. And essentially, if we think about uh, in terms of learning and growth, the comfort zone is a lovely place to be. It's a nice place to, to spend time. Um, but you don't really learn anything there. You don't grow there because you're in your comfort zone. There's no challenge. There's no stimulation, really. It's just um, it's a nice place to kind of rest and recover. What Tauben Shahar says is that when we step into the stretch zone, where we challenge ourselves, where actually we come up against obstacles and difficulties and we struggle, that is where the most learning and growth happens. It's where we learn the most, it's where we grow the most, kind of uh, emotionally, physically, uh, and mentally. Outside of the stretch zone, however, is the panic zone. The panic zone is where we feel uh, and we think that the challenge that is presented to us is far beyond what we're capable of doing. Um, and so we don't learn anything really in the panic zone because what happens is we go into this, what's commonly called the fight flight mode uh, because we become overwhelmed, we might become anxious and the thinking, the rational part of the brain, which is called the prefrontal cortex, that kind of shuts down and the, the amygdala uh, takes over, which is the part of the brain that's there to keep us alive when there's a, a threat. Um, but there are some key things that we can do as parents to help our children, one, leave their comfort zones so that they stretch and challenge themselves more, but also how we can support them if they kind of stray into the panic zone. And these are some of the key features. Um, let me just move my, I can move my screen out of the way, move that over here. So the very first thing is that children need to feel safe, so they need to start off in the comfort zone and they need to trust the person that they're with, whoever is supporting them with their challenge. Uh, so in, in terms of a parent, then you're in the ideal position, and this is true of teachers too, uh, to get children to step outside their comfort zones because they trust you and they feel safe in your presence. The next thing to do is whatever the challenge is, the task, it could be a task, any any challenge doesn't really matter you need to break it down into kind of achievable steps because often challenges can seem really big and overwhelming if we kind of look at the the whole thing all at once and if it becomes overwhelming just by looking at it then we're going to stray into the panic zone it's going to be very hard for us to achieve our goals or to to grow in that state so we need to break whatever the situation is down into to manageable steps so even with the global pandemic it's a simple thing like just taking each day as it comes rather than thinking about how long is this going to last how are we going to be social distancing for weeks months on end just take each day as it comes and just set kind of small achievements to to achieve each day the next thing is if we're trying to encourage children to step outside their comfort zones they need to experience some kind of success because as we'll see in a minute, a key facet of the stretch zone is that you'll make mistakes and you will fail there because we don't know this material. We don't know how to do this challenge because it's outside of our comfort zone. So we need to experience some success because that then motivates us to carry on. And that's why breaking down a challenge or a task into kind of smaller, more achievable steps helps because we can achieve something. We feel good. We're motivated. We carry on. The other thing to, to kind of bear in mind is that because the stretch zone is uh, inherently uncomfortable, uh, we're going to make mistakes because we don't know what we're doing. We, this is a new challenge to us. It's stretching us. Therefore, we need to learn how to embrace mistakes. Uh, very often children, uh, and I see this in, in classrooms, 
um, want to kind of hide their mistakes or they're embarrassed by their mistakes or they feel that their mistakes mean that they're not very clever or they're not very good at something when really mistakes are an essential part of the learning learning pro process you cannot learn anything new without making some mistakes along the way so whether it's riding your bike learning how to juggle three balls or knowing how to do equivalent fractions in maths you're going to make mistakes along the way and it's important that we teach children how to embrace their mistakes so that they can learn from them and then move on the other thing to do is when children uh, stray into the panic zone and they just feel like this is too difficult i don't know what i'm doing is to support them give them emotional support give them a hug give them some encouragement but they need support to give them that going back to point one that trust and that safety even if it means kind of bringing them back in the comfort zone and then starting again and getting them back in their stretch zone they need that support because they're not going to learn anything uh, in the panic zone other than this doesn't feel nice I don't want to do this anymore uh, in which case they'll just shut down they'll kind of give up so support them when they panic and the last thing and probably one of the most important aspects of the the stretch zone is that th this metaphor is about teaching children how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and what I mean by that is you know the comfort zone by its nature is a safe comfortable place it's where we relax it's where we're not challenged at all because it's our comfort zone the very nature of the stretch zone means we're going to feel uncomfortable we might feel some nerves we might feel some anxiety we might feel unsure and confused and we might not like the mistakes that we're making but when we inhabit the stretch zone more often and we get used to those feelings and we learn that those feelings are okay we don't need to run away from them we don't need to hide from them and we, we learn that those feelings are a natural part of what it means to learn new things and to grow and to challenge ourselves. The more we can get comfortable with those feelings, the more we actually grow. And what happens over time is the stretch zone, sorry, the comfort zone, which starts off small, when we inhabit the stretch zone more, our comfort zone actually grows. Because let's say we were learning how to do a wheelie in our BMX and we kept making mistakes and we fell off, and we grazed our knee and we didn't like it. The more we stay in our stretch zone, we practice and we learn from our mistakes and we keep trying and get that encouragement and support. As soon as we know how to, to do a wheelie in our BMX and we've mastered that technique, that is then in our comfort zone. Our comfort zone has grown and wheelies on our BMX are now in our comfort zone. So then, we're, then we need to look for our next challenge, the next thing to stretch us. And that's how, when we learn new things and we grow, our comfort zone actually gets bigger. And we can actually learn how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, part of getting children to kind of embrace their mistakes and inhabit the stretch zone is actually teaching them about how their brains learn. Uh, and I love this video, it's BBC Brain Smart. Uh, meet your brain you can find it on YouTube um, and it just teaches about the neuroplasticity in a, in a child friendly way of how their brains learn and how they make connections I'll just play this now Think of all the many varied things you like doing. The command center for all this activity is here. The brain. In the base are the bits that keep you alive, controlling things like your heartbeats and body temperature. Here's the part that triggers your emotions. These wrinkly outer bits are what make us intelligent, processing all our sensations, calculations, memories, plans for the future, and new ideas. All this work is done by a network of 100 billion nerve cells, or neurons. Electrical signals send information along pathways through the network, with individual neurons communicating with each other by passing chemicals across the tiny gaps that separate them. Every thought or experience you have is a reaction along a whole pathway of neurons and there are 40 quadrillion possible ways for the neurons to connect. So there's always going to be room for new knowledge and new ideas. 
Certain areas of the brain specialize in dealing with particular activities such as vision, movement, and speech. And the great thing is, when your brain spends a lot of time working on something new, the neurons in the part of the brain that deals with that activity establish more and more connections. So even if you're not very good at something to begin with, keep going. Your brain will literally change. And that's why practice makes perfect. So one of the, the things to um, re-emphasize about the stretch zone is actually uh, studies show that neuroplasticity, which is your brain's ability to kind of make those connections, neuroplasticity is maximizing the stretch zone. Uh, and it's actually minimizing the comfort zone because we're not challenging our brains and our neurons to make connections. And it's minimizing the panic zone because we're not able to make those connections because we're just in that fight flight mode. So the stretch zone is inherently good for our well-being and our learning because that's where we learn the most. It's where our brain makes the most connections. So something simple you can do at home, you can do this in the classroom as well if you're a teacher, is just to get children to think about things that they aren't very good at now or that they don't quite know how to do, but they want to get better at and just set a kind of two or three little brain goals. So now that they know about how their brains make those connections, um, what is it that they'd like to be able to do, uh, say, before the end of the summer holidays, um, so that when they go back to school in September, they, they know how to do this thing. And it could be, you know, learning their eight times table off by heart. It could be knowing how to do joined up handwriting. It could be anything that they want. Um, just jot two or three things down. And then the key thing is they've got to then practice because that is what makes your neurons connect up. It's the practice, it's the repetition, it's the having a go, making a mistake, learning how to do it slightly differently and slightly better the next time. That's what helps uh, your neurons make connections. And when they've made those connections and you've rehearsed it so much and they're hardwired, that learning is then in your long-term memory. You will uh, struggle to forget that the more you practice something. Uh, this gentleman on the left is called Mike Mullen, and uh, he's a former kind of pro half pipe uh, BMX champion. And he goes into schools and teaches children about the, the stretch zone and about uh, this concept, which is growth mindset, which is exactly what that video showed, really, that uh, when we know how our brains work and learn, uh, we then understand and realize that everyone can improve at something if we practice and we keep trying and people help us and teach us and support us. And I love uh, this concept. So Mike came into my primary school in Hertfordshire and something that really resonated with the children with this concept of learning. And what Mike was saying was that when he was growing up, probably around the age of eight or nine, he had uh, what some psychologists called a fixed mindset. He believed some people were good at some things and then they were not good at others. And that was really out of your control. You were either born a maths person or you weren't born a maths person, that kind of uh, idea. Uh, and then one year his parents bought him a BMX and he took it out into his garden. And I think he had a VHS, a, a video about some BMX skills and he was trying to teach himself some tricks. And of course, this was in his stretch zone. He hadn't done this before, so he kept making mistakes. And he said, whereas in school, if he made a mistake, say in maths, it confirmed to him that he wasn't good at maths and though he shouldn't put that much effort in because he's not a maths person. With the BMX, he kept persevering. He kept trying to get better at this trick. And what he realized was that every time he made a mistake or failed, he learned something in the process about how to do the trick better the next time. And this continual process of failing at the trick and then learning something and failing and learning, he coined this uh, phrase called flurning, which is that when you want to master anything in your life, it involves failure and learning. And the two are, you know, inseparable. And so the children in my school really love this concept of flurning, that learning anything new involves failing and learning and that's how you get good at something and mike has gone on to be you know a, a world champion one of the best bmx's in the world 
Uh, and so he's he's got a really inspiring story. And if you want to look up his website, it's called the BMX Academy. So Google Mike Munn and have a look. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the stretch zone and learning new things and learning how to handle difficulties is that any kind of learning and growth involves stress. Now, stress gets a bad reputation uh, for good reasons, because when we are stressed for prolonged periods of times, it can do damage to our bodies and our brains. And so we want to avoid that. However, stress is can be our friend in terms of learning. And this classic inverted U curve graph comes from two psychologists called Yerkes Dodson. And on the um, X axis across the bottom is stress level. So you've got low moderate and high and on the y-axis going up is your performance level how much you're learning or how much you're how well you're performing and you've got poor okay and then good and what they found was that when your stress level and that can sometimes be called the challenge level or your arousal level when that is low you tend to perform badly and this is the comfort zone okay when you aren't challenged very much at all you tend to get bored and your brain, which wants to be stimulated, wants to make all those connections, is looking around to be stimulated. So if you're doing something and it's not challenging enough, you'll get bored. You might go on your phone. You might look out the window because you're looking for stimulation. If you go to the other end, if the stress level is too high, the challenge is too difficult, your performance is poor as well. And that's because we go into the panic zone. We can't focus on the task because we're just anxious and worried. And so we don't perform very well. We don't learn much. What Yerkes Dodson found was that we learn best, our neuroplasticity is maximized when we experience mild to moderate levels of stress. So we need some stress, we need some challenge, but mild to moderate is that kind of sweet spot, sometimes called the Goldilocks sweet spot. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's not too hard, it's not too easy, it's just in the middle. Um, that is where we inhabit the stretch zone, we learn the most, we perform at our best. So I just really wanted to get that idea across. We're not trying to make everything really easy for children. They need that mild to moderate level of stress and challenge to kind of really turn on their brains for learning. And I just really wanted to end uh, with, with, this is Tal Ben-Shahar on the left. This is his uh, book, or one of his books called Happier. Um, because, Stress, struggle, challenge, these are actually keys to happiness. And this is why kind of teaching children how to handle difficult situations, how to handle struggles, I think is a key to happiness. And I just want to read just a, a short section from his book, Happy, which I've got here. It's got loads of post-it notes in it because it's one of my favorite books. Uh, in it, he says, educators, especially parents, confuse struggle with pain. Wanting to protect their children from pain, they cater for their children's every wish and rescue them from every challenge. These parents deny their children the opportunity to struggle, thereby keeping them from experiencing flow, which is a state we often experience in the stretch zone, as well as the satisfaction of overcoming challenges. When parents help their children circumvent hard work, it can lead to much unhappiness in the long run. When challenged, children, like adults, will find meaning in their accomplishments and enjoy the process of attaining their goals. And he ends by saying, struggles and hardships and challenges are a necessary component of an emotionally rich life. There are no easy shortcuts to happiness. So I just wanted to end with that quote, that actually challenge, difficulty, struggles can be, with the right support, and the right framing where we set things up as a challenge, we set things up as a stretch zone. These can be amazing opportunities for children to learn lots, to grow and to feel happier when they accomplish things and when they overcome their difficulties. So that was my short talk. Um, thank you for listening very much. If you wanted to find out more about me, my website is called teachhappy.co.uk. My book, uh, Wellbeing in the Primary Classroom, you can buy it on Amazon. It's uh, published by Bloomsbury. Uh, thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed my talk.